Hello! So this episode is going to be mashing up our previous videos on Google Cloud Functions and Puppeteer and smashing them all up together so that we can use Puppeteer on Google Cloud Functions. So let's go. So using Puppeteer on Google Cloud Functions is actually pretty straightforward, but there are just a few things you need to keep track of. Uh, one of them is the configuration, how to actually get it running in the first place. And the second is how to treat the Puppeteer browser instance so that you have more performant functions. Uh, so let's get started. All right, first things first, we need to make our project directory. Uh, so I use my kickstart command, which uh, I've touched on before, but uh, just to recap, it is a generic bash function that makes a directory, CDs into it, uh, initializes Git, initializes NPM, opens up Visual Studio Code in that project directory, and prints out a very nice motivational message, uh, which is, it helps. Whatever, whatever you need to just keep on going, just it's, it's, uh, it's important. Give yourself a boost. High five. So before we get into this, I'm gonna assume three things. Uh, one, you have initialized your Google Cloud environment via G Cloud init. Two, you have turned on the Functions API. And three, you have hooked up a billing account to your Google Cloud account so that you can access external IPs. If you haven't done all three of those things, then you should get on that now. Press pause there and uh, just come back to me when you're done. Um, now, if you are all set with that, uh, then the last thing that I will have you do while I'm talking about this is install Puppeteer uh, because that does, uh, that does uh, download an entire Chrome instance, which can take a little while. So do npm install Puppeteer while we're going through this process, uh, and then it'll be done by the time you have to write any code that involves uh, Puppeteer. All right, first up here, we are grabbing our Puppeteer object, same way we would uh, in any sort of uh, Puppeteer script. Uh, next up here, we have something that might be a little bit different than how you normally uh, initialize a browser window. So we are doing this outside of our function here uh, because we don't want to open up a new browser every single time our function launches. We want the browser to be launched once, once and then stay open so that we can create new contexts and new tabs in the browser uh, without having to, uh, to create an entirely new browser instance. Uh, so here I am just uh, capturing the browser promise with puppeteer.launch. Uh, so we're not actually waiting for anything. We're just saying like, hey, go get this started. Give me the promise back uh, and then we'll deal with that promise later. One other thing here that uh, is probably different than how you've used Puppeteer in the past uh, is we're passing an argument uh, called dash dash no dash sandbox. This is necessary to work uh, with Puppeteer on Google Cloud Functions. I don't really know the details behind it. Uh, it just doesn't work if it doesn't have this and it does work if it does have this. So you put it in and you move on. Down here, our function uh, looks and acts mostly like you're probably familiar with. Uh, we've got our uh, request and response, ob response objects. Uh, we deal with those regularly in Google Cloud Functions. We are grabbing a URL from the query or we are defaulting to HTTP example.com. And here we are awaiting for the result of our browser promise. Uh, so this, uh, once the promise has resolved, will uh, continuously resolve to that same browser instance and we don't have to keep on launching a new one. Now, in order to get the same fresh browser experience, we can use the create incognito browser context. Uh, this is a relatively new method on the Puppeteer API uh, that allows you to quickly spin up new incog incognito mode contexts uh, so that you will have fresh uh, application storage, uh, fresh session information, fresh cookies, all that stuff that you'd want on a fresh browser instance uh, without having to launch an entirely new browser. Uh, so here we are going to want to get a new page. Next up, we go to our URL. Here we're grabbing our screenshot. And then finally, we're just setting a content type of image slash PNG and then sending our raw image data down to the browser. And bam, we're done. Uh, well, aside from this context.close at the bottom, which just makes sure, makes sure that we clean up our context. Uh, 
that'll probably likely happen on its own anyway. I'm not really sure you have to do that. I did that because it looked clean. So how do you test this? Uh, have you played with testing Google Cloud Functions at all? Um, if you have, you've probably used the Functions Emulator. The Functions Emulator is deprecated now. In uh, place of it, you have the Functions Framework. And the Functions Framework is something that you can install via NPM. So you do npm install uh, at google-cloud slash functions-framework. Uh, you install this locally to your project, so you don't have this uh, functions global at all anymore. Uh, and then you can use it in your npm scripts in order to start up an environment that will run your function. So here we have uh, our npm start script uh, is functions-framework with a target of screenshot, which is our exported function name. So now, if we go to npm, or if we go to our console and do npm run start, we start running, we open ourselves up, and bam, we have a screenshot of uh, example.com. That's in a URL of HTTPS, github.com. Bam, we have a screenshot of github.com. So we're done with this, now we need to deploy our function. So to deploy our function, we can do a uh, G cloud functions deploy a screenshot target dash HTTP because we want an HTTP uh, trigger trigger dash HTTP because we want an HTTP triggered function. We want a runtime of node JS 10 and we want a memory of uh, I would say at least one gigabyte. You can, uh, much to my surprise this morning, run Puppeteer on Google Cloud Functions with a 256 megabyte um, function, uh, but Chrome will very, very likely uh, explode beyond that limit and your function will get killed and it'll have to restart. Uh, you'll be able to browse some pages in the examples that I was using myself. Uh, I was able to take screenshots of example.com and that worked out well, uh, but screenshots of any other page just killed the function immediately. Uh, so you could probably work with 512 depending on what you're trying to do with Chrome. Uh, I've found the best luck was starting with and sticking around a gigabyte unless I was doing anything super wild. So now we press enter hoping that I put in all my uh, command line arguments properly. I would have expected this to do something by now. Ah, there we are, deploying function. Yes. May take a while, up to two minutes. All right, we are deployed. Let's check out our URL. Hopefully this works. And it works, yes. All right, let's try a different URL. What URL do we want to try? Let's try Netflix, see if that works. Ba -ba, waiting for my page to load. Do, 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 yeah. Cool, and that's it, that was easy, right? Not too crazy. Uh, the, the things that you need to remember, um, manage your browser instance with the mindset of reusing browsers as much as possible so that you don't have to spin up an entire Chrome every time. Uh, and two, make sure you are passing no sandbox. And uh, three, you need to make sure that you are starting a function with an appropriate uh, uh, memory size so that Chrome doesn't die. And uh, that's it, we are good, we are done, and uh, you did great. Thank you very much. Uh, talk to you later, bye. First things first, let's record this. Why is this not working? Ah, there we go.
<laughs> what were we doing? A launch window or, or however you want to reset your, your browser. Uh, I don't even need to say that. We're gonna, we're gonna ignore that. I don't even need to talk about that and I'm just gonna cut that out. Zip, zip, boo. All right.